So round three, I'm paired against Ujian Ray. And um, yeah, his FIDE rating is 1442, but uh, his USCF rating is higher. I think it's something, actually, I, I don't think it was as high as the previous opponents. I think he was like 18, 1900. Uh, but again, all these kids in the Bay Area, they are generally working pretty hard and they're pretty underrated. And there's also been a pandemic, if you guys have not been following the news. And so a lot of people haven't played a ton of tournaments in the last um, two years. So for a lot of these kids, their ratings are their ratings were already behind their actual strength just normally, but their ratings are like even more uh, behind. Because he actually, he beat someone really, really good. Actually, in the previous round, I think he beat like a 2300 in the tournament. So I knew he's like a serious player. It's just, okay, he hasn't had, he hasn't played any FIDE tournaments yet, right? So his FIDE rating is still going to be super low. But of course, he's playing really, really well. Uh, so I, and for some reason, they gave me a second white in the row. I think it's because his first game, they gave him like a one point buy. And, uh, and then in his next game, in the second game, he was playing white. So he was he was due black to kind of equalize the color. And uh, for me, I already had one white and one black. So they gave me white uh, a second time. And I decided, you know, like the previous game went well. So let's just do it again. Knight f3, d5, e3. <laughs> so we have e3 poison uh, round two. I think I saw from his games that he was uh, either, uh, again, QGD or Slav player. So I decided let's just go for this. And uh, we actually end up getting a very similar position to the previous game. Uh, in fact, uh, this was exactly what we had in round two, where uh, in that game, black played c5, and I took and played d4. Um, and here, whoops, uh, white or black ended up playing uh, b6 instead. So b6 is another very typical move here, just getting ready to develop the bishop. Uh, I decide to take on d5 at this point. Now that black plays b6, if black goes e takes d5, then I'm going to play d4 here. And with, once e takes d5 is played, black would really just rather develop the bishop to like g4 or f5. But with the move b6, it, it doesn't really make sense. And black should probably put the bishop on b7 anyway. So it's kind of like uh, just waiting for black to commit to this one. And then now we take on d5. That's kind of uh, the idea. Uh, instead, after cd5, black played uh, knight takes d5 which I think is not a great move. It's a very typical idea to exchange off a pair of knights, but I don't think it's such a great idea here um, because after knight takes d5, if queen takes d5, then white is gonna win the battle for the center and I can play like queen c2 to start and then like bishop c4 and castles. And I think that's kind of a very nice position for white. But um, after e takes d5, d4, once again, we get this kind of position where, okay, black played c5. One day, either he's going to take on d4, I take back, we get an IQP, or I'm going to take on c5, leave black with hanging pawns. And in both cases, it's kind of nice that we traded off a pair of minor pieces. So that's why I kind of felt uh, happy about this for white. And uh, bishop b4 check here, then white just goes knight d2. And this is not really a big deal. I'll play a3 to kick the bishop, and everything will still develop normally. And I think white structure is just uh, a little bit better. So d4, c5, bishop d3, uh, bishop a6, a bit of a surprise, but okay, it's logical. Black wants to uh, trade off the bad bishop. Um, but, you know, I talked about it in the last game. And okay, I mentioned it here. It's like not great for black to trade minor pieces, I think, in general. And also this light squared bishop has a very important job of defending the d5 pawn. So trading this one off uh, is not always in black's favor. Uh, now I consider taking here and uh, putting the knight on a6. But I wasn't sure, you know, the knight can just come back to c7 and e6 one day anyway. So it's not like the knight is super sidelined. Um, well, sorry, <laughs> skipping to the end of the game. I decided to instead go just castles. And uh, on bishop takes d3, which is play queen takes d3. I just use the extra tempo and I get my queen out. And uh, yeah, here I felt very, very comfortable. I want to go rook fd1, rook ac1, d takes c5 might be a threat. Maybe I'll go bishop a3 somewhere and just put pressure on these pawns. Uh, so black goes bishop f6, okay, pinning the pawn, it made sense. Rook ac1, knight d7, and uh, here I play bishop a3. Now this was really actually a, a key moment because, um, I mean, this one makes a lot of sense. I unpin my pawn, I, I put pressure on this diagonal, um, but I was really strongly considering this move here, queen f5, which I think 
might be stronger objectively. I really wasn't sure during the game, but this looked very annoying too, just attacking the pawn and how does black defend it? <laughs> it's not, not so obvious. If, if black has to play knight b8 here, uh, then that seems really bad. And I'll go bishop a3 and now it's just a way better version. So I thought black has to go c takes d4. And uh, if I take with the piece, then okay, the knight uh, jumps out like knight c5. And here I didn't see anything uh, super, super special here, except actually, hold on, I think I was calculating this one and this one. This I felt like should be good for white because we're, we're gonna be forcing black to uh, double the pawns. And in fact, we even have like queen takes d5 immediately, I believe here. So I don't think this was uh, the exact issue for me. Again, using this, uh, this same trick. Um, but, uh, yeah, maybe knight e5 instead. Somehow I felt like, okay, I get the IQP, but I'm not actually, uh, winning the pawn. I was also considering this one, but then I think takes, takes, knight c5, um, is, is kind of okay for, for black. But I think in the game, I definitely missed the trick in this position. Uh, cause I, I don't think I, I was seeing that I can go knight c6 and, uh, and queen takes d5 and just win the pawn immediately. I think if I had, maybe I would have gone for this. Um, cause I also considered in this position just to take with the pawn, which I thought is actually kind of clever. And normally you don't want to take with the pawn cause now my bishop is bad too. But the point is I cover all the squares from the knight and how's black gonna defend the d5 pawn? Now black really, I thought, would have to go knight b8. And so I definitely would play this position. This looked like fantastic for me, like bishop a3, knight e5, uh, rook fe1. It just looked great. I felt like white should be winning here, or close to winning. I don't know, somehow during the game, I just kind of wanted to, to put a little bit more pressure uh, rather than go for this direct stuff because I wasn't 100% sure about this one. And then I also wasn't 100% sure maybe I'll, I could just take on d4. Um, so after a long thought, I ended up just going bishop a3, just because I feel like this was putting a lot more pressure on black, because now I want to take and then win the d5 pawn. Um, now it goes bishop e7. I feel like, okay, this is the only move to defend this one and also break out of the pin. And uh, here I think is where I realized I actually miscalculated because the, originally the plan was to take, and uh, if, if anything other than knight takes, I'm winning the d5 pawn. Um, but on knight takes, what I didn't realize, I thought I would go here, bishop takes, and then rook fd1. This was the plan, and I'm winning the pawn. Uh, but then I realized that actually here, black can take back with the pawn instead. For some reason, I was just thinking bishop, but you can actually take back with the pawn. And then on rook fd1, queen a5, and uh, yeah, I wasn't 100% clear how big my advantage is here because now this a pawn is, is hanging. So if I take on d5, black is just taking on a2. It still felt better for me. Like this bishop on e7 isn't great and I have like knight e5 and stuff. Um, but if I play like a slow move like rook c2, a4, then rook d8, you know, black just kind of defends. And yeah, again, I wasn't sure how, how much I actually have here. So realizing that, okay, that's not so great. Now I just kind of revert back to plan B, just <laughs> improving my pieces. Um, now queen f5, I think is too late. Um, although, yeah, I think here queen f5, black just takes on d4. And then takes, takes, knight takes d4. We just get like a regular IQP position, knight f6. We get something similar in, in the game as well. So this was of course possible, but um, I didn't think it was anything special. So I just go uh, rook fd1. And uh, now we are threatening to take and take on d5. So black is forced to take on d4. Bishop e7, queen e7, knight takes d4. And finally I get like my dream IQP, right? I traded off a bunch of minor pieces. Black has no counterplay. It's just like slightly better for white, maybe clearly better. A lot of times the engines like nowadays are super optimistic uh, about these kinds of positions. They just think like it's like, it's like plus one for white. Like white already won the pawn. In, in the eyes of the engine, <laughs> white has already won the pawn. I think between humans, it's really not so simple, but it does feel like a very pleasant position. Um, and here I, I went for a pretty deep think because uh, I realized I had some dynamic opportunities. I go knight f5. And uh, now the idea is, of course, I'm attacking the queen. 
and putting some pressure, and it's not so easy for black to uh, to find a square for the queen. Like if queen d7, uh, then I was thinking e4 here, if I remember correctly, was looking pretty strong. And uh, knight takes e4, there's queen takes. And otherwise it seems like I'm just winning the pawn. Yeah, I think I was looking at this. If rook d8, I take here, and on knight takes d5, I have you know, just the classic trick once again. This one really kept coming up in these games with 97, and we win it all back with the extra piece. So, of course, black shouldn't take on d5 here, but but then, okay, it's just a pawn up for white, and everything is kind of, uh, okay, this guy's hanging, but everything is in white's favor. White is just super, super active. And, uh, yeah, on queen e6, I wanted rook c6, this nice tempo. Again, you can't take this one because of 97. And uh, the point of... This one is just to maybe take over the c-file. On queen d7, I was also looking at lines like this. Rook takes f6, followed by e4, and just trying to mate. Um, but this wasn't working because uh, the king, I think, hides. And on queen g3, there's rook g8. And on queen d4, there's like queen e6. So this one I actually wasn't so sure about. But then I realized it's much stronger to invert the move order. And on queen d7, the plan was to play e4 here. And this I thought was just absolutely killer. I was really I was really psyched by all this because like Rick is never be able to get captured because of 97 check. 94 we always have queen takes e4. Everything is hanging but Rick still you can't <laughs> you can't take anything. And uh and now I'm turning Rick takes f6 which is just a stone cold kill. So any kind of like Rick d8 move I just take on f6, queen g3 and uh it's just mate with uh, this one and that one. So, yeah, I was very excited about all this. Uh, my opponent played queen e5. And if queen e4, then okay, I'm just taking and I'm playing this end game where I felt like I'm much more active and, and doing really well. This pawn is a clear weakness and my pieces are, are a lot stronger. So I felt like very good winning chances here. So I was always happy to play this end game. Uh, so my opponent played queen e5, which was, okay, maybe even the main move I was thinking about, because this one looked like the most uh, solid. It avoids like rook c6 stuff. But then f4. So I just kind of continue. I realized even though f4 is not a move you really want to play in the position, because it weakens the e3 pawn long term, I felt like it much more important to just hit the queen, because the queen doesn't have a lot of squares. If queen b2, then I think I was going to go rook c2, queen a3, and I would just figure it out from here. But I felt like it, it has to be good for white. Um, you know, I can also maybe throw a 97 check and then go rook c2 and take on d5. But anything like this just looked very, very pleasant with the queen sidelines. I think I was going to follow up with something like queen d4 and then even look for like g4, g5 ideas. And yeah, just looked great. Black's queen is, again, just completely out of the game. Uh, so instead, queen e6, black goes back. But now we get our rook c6 in. And uh, yeah, I was really hoping for queen d7, where again, I would go e4 with this threat. Rook takes f6 and queen g3. And uh, this just looked great. So finally, black is forced to play queen e4. So after all that, all that effort, you know, all that uh, calculation and stuff, we get queen e4. And I, I didn't think I have anything better than queen takes e4, d takes e4 in this endgame. <laughs> so after all that work, we leave ourselves with like a better endgame. But it looked really nice, although I, I really misplayed it. I, I have to be honest with you guys. I, I think I misplayed this one uh, pretty badly. So I go rook c7. My issue here was like, I just didn't know what to do. I have a lot of useful moves. I can play h3. I can try to get the king in. I can try to take the seventh rank. I can maybe look for some 97 check ideas. I can try to put the rook on d6 or double on the c file or go after the e pawn. It's like so many things to do. I just couldn't decide what to do. I feel like I probably should have just, just played h3. Um, also, rook d6 to just stop. Uh, this is a move I, I definitely considered because it stops black from going rook d8. And then if rook c8, then we have 97 check. So this stops black from being able to uh, activate the rooks. Um, but yeah, I wasn't sure that I even want to avoid a rook trade. Sometimes trading rooks can really simplify the defensive task. And uh, I also felt like, you know, maybe black first goes rook e8, okay, stops 97, and then wants to go rook c8, and then what am I doing here? Because eventually the rook is going to come in with counterplay. 
Well, I can also uh, maybe look for some G6 at some point. Oh, not with the knight on F6 hanging, but yeah. So I just wasn't sure. I end up going rook C7. So I thought this was kind of smart because on rook D8, then uh, minimum we can take and uh, take on A7. And I thought this should be good for white because although black maybe gets some counterplay, the problem is there the, there's the back rank. So black still owes a big tempo with something like G6 or H6 to fix the back rank before the rook can activate. Um, but G6 always gets met with knight H6 check and F7 falls. And so then white is just picking up too many pawns. So this didn't seem to work for black. Um, but now he's able to go G6, which is why I'm not sure rook C7 is really the best. Uh, because with the rook on the sixth rank, then, okay, I just take here. But here he gets g6. And, yeah, I realize I actually don't have such a great square for my knight. Because, like, knight d6, there's uh, maybe rook d8. There's maybe knight g4. Actually, a lot of annoying moves. Um, so, yeah, and then knight h6, king g7, right? No, nothing really there. So I end up going knight e7 check, king g7. And uh, here I played h3. Because uh, knight... G4 was annoying, and also at some point maybe knight d5 is annoying as well. So I just wanted to cover this one. And uh, my idea was I'll eventually maneuver the knight, like knight c6, maybe knight e5. So I kind of still felt okay here. But now h5. Uh, I go king f2. And h4. And now black actually has some annoying ideas with like knight h5, knight g3. And then if the rook ever gets in, that's very unpleasant. With the knight on g3, there's a lot of mates in the position, like rook f1 mate uh, is something to avoid. So after the game, I was really thinking maybe I should have just played g3 here. Somehow I wasn't like super happy with this move to open up the second rank. Um, but, uh, you know, the king will get out. I can play rook d2. I'm thinking now this was probably a, a better concession compared to allowing uh, h4. Because in the game, black actually could have gotten some, some serious counterplay. Um, so rook dc1. Now I decide to do something pretty strange. Um, but my idea was to start try to like doubling on the seventh rank. So rook dc1, I want to go rook b7, rook c7, and then just uh, put a lot of pressure here. Black goes rook d8, of course, and rook c2. This was kind of my idea. Okay, I cover the second rank, and now the rook is on d8. I want to go knight c6, knight e5, which looks really annoying. Maybe double rook, double the rooks again on the seventh rank. Okay, it looked good. But then as he was thinking here, I started to realize, like, wait, I'm. it's not so clear. Number one, black can go knight h5, and then let's say knight c6, rook d1. And if I play knight e5 here, then there's knight g3. And this is just mate. So, you know, I can take this pawn with check, but king g8, and then what? I'm just getting mated on uh, on f1. So this, okay, uh, of course, I, I can't allow. But if I do something else like king e2 here or something, then there's just rook g1. And then this one's falling. And so I wasn't sure, you know, like, maybe this is still playable, like knight e5. But uh, it looked very, very scary. Black can take here. Maybe black throws this one in first, and then uh, I can't really uh, stop black from taking or doubling rooks on the first rank. There's also knight g3 happening. Uh, it looks super, super dangerous. So this was one option where, yeah, I don't think I, I can go for... Instead, I have to maybe uh, try to cover up like king e1 or something. But the problem is it's like there's always rook d3, king e2, there's knight g3 check. So it's really, really not that easy. Um, yeah, maybe I could have played g3, but I definitely didn't really want to trade these pawns off and, and leave myself with, with more weaknesses. Maybe it was better uh, than allowing knight h5, knight g3 at this point, but um, it's definitely not, uh, not ideal. Um, so... Yeah, so knight h5, this was very concerning. And to be honest with you guys, I have no idea what I would play. I, I was just going to keep thinking about it. Um, rook d1 was another move that was also annoying. Just the immediate rook d1 with this plan. And then, of course, bringing the second rook to d8. And again, if king e2, rook g1. And I don't know how I'm going to defend that g-pawn without just repeating moves. So, yeah, I would have to think here. I, I honestly don't know. I haven't checked the position yet with the engine. Um, I, I imagine it, it might think that black is already just fine. But uh, yeah, that was uh, 
that was definitely very, very concerning. In the game, Black ends up playing King F8, which was uh, extremely relieving because now it just felt like, OK, that's that's a huge, huge tempo that Black just just gave up. And I think it probably decides the game uh, because now I get Knight C6. And uh, if Black goes Rook D1 here, Knight E5, I'm just much, much faster. Right, my tempo up and now Rook takes F7 is coming with check. I might even have time to bring uh, the second Rook in. Um, so for example, like Knight H5, I take here. And uh, I mean, I think it would probably be smart just to play King E2, but let's say Rook comes in just for example, Black would not be able to play Knight G3 because uh, White is mating with the two Rooks and, and the Knight. Something like this, or if uh, king goes here, then just immediate knight takes g6. So this one tempo just changes everything, and it's a huge tempo also because the king is worse on f8 than than on uh, on g7 or, or g8. So um, yeah, very very fortunate for me uh, that I got the sin after the game. I, I, my opponent mentioned he was thinking about knight d5 here, which I wasn't too worried about because okay, we forced the trade. But then I thought I'm, I am better in this rook end game with like rook e7 and the second rook coming in. I just thought I'm a little bit faster here and, and this looked very nice for me. But um, yeah, knight h5 or rook d1 definitely was a huge, huge concern. Um, maybe rook d1 g3 I would have to play here actually it might be worth it just to just to avoid the, the worst of black's counterplay. Anyway, after king f8, knight c6, now things are looking very, very good because I want to play knight e5. If black goes rook d7, then it's very important I have knight e5 anyway, and my rook is defended, and so ultimately black is not defending the uh, f7 pawn. And once this one falls, it's really just kind of game over. So yeah, I felt very good here. Black tried knight d5, uh, which I'd already seen was just not going to work out. Uh, knight takes d8, knight takes c7, and I definitely considered just taking this one and playing this rook endgame. Um, but okay, it, it definitely seemed like I would have quite a bit of work to do here because Black's Rook is very active. So for example, something like Rook C3, and then Black wants to play Rook C2 check and go after the E pawn, go after the G pawn, a lot of weaknesses that Black can latch onto. So I felt like, okay, this might be might be like good chances for White, but definitely, uh, definitely not clear. Um, but I, okay, I realized that Knight takes F7 here is just much, much easier. I just grab a pawn. The, the f7 pawn, which is more important, and now um, this one is uh, is lost and with check. And uh, yeah, here this I think I thought was just a much much easier version because I went a pawn and the black's rook doesn't get nearly as active, uh, and I can play like uh, king e2 here. I can go after this pawn. This one is going to be lost as well as soon as black has to move the rook, and so here is just uh, you know superior version. Um, so. Yeah, knight takes d8, knight takes f7. This is uh, this is much cleaner. And um, now after uh, king takes, rook takes c7, I thought this was very simple. Um, instead, black played knight a6. And just keeping the knights on the board. But now knight e5, okay, we want a pawn. g6 is now under a uh, huge attack. And yeah, the uh, game is just over. Uh, rook d8, and uh, I just play king e2 here, because, okay, I can take the pawn, but might as well just stop black's counterplay, and I think this was a good move, because here my opponent resigned, whereas if I had played rook takes g6, probably he would have played like king h7, and then I would have to play king e2, and then the game would last uh, longer. But this is a nice move just to kind of show the opponent, like, okay, you have no counterplay, and uh, yeah, now this one is lost, and it's game over.